My name is Elisa Yeaman, and I'm a senior scholar at the Global Health Education and Learning Incubator at Harvard University. Today, we're going to talk about accountability and how it applies in global health and development, and in particular, how a unique mechanism called the UN Secretary General's Independent Accountability Panel on women's, children's, and adolescents' health has approached the concept of accountability in the Sustainable Development Goals. When we think about accountability, it seems like a straightforward concept. We think about it as you do what you tell people you're going to do, and that's the way we normally frame accountability in our personal lives. That's the way we think about it with politicians who run for office. But in global health, the concept of accountability can be more complex. So let's take a very simple example of making sure that a medication gets to patients who need it. And look at who is accountable for what to whom. So first, who is accountable? Even with something as simple as just making sure that patients get the medication that they need, there are a lot of actors who are answerable in global health. So first of all, there are a lot of providers. There are nurses, there are stockists, there are physicians and maybe physician's assistants, there are pharmacists, there are program implementers who need to focus on supply chains. There are provincial and national health authorities that need to issue guidelines and make sure that medication is available in the right places. And there are responsibilities that the parliament and the executive branch have more broadly in terms of issuing legal frameworks and regulations and oversight and budgets for medications. And then, at the international level, there are other responsibilities. International organizations have responsibilities, whether it is for securing specific medications for specific conditions, issuing essential medicines and diagnostic lists, such as the WHO does. There are responsibilities from donors, donor states, as well as foundations who make commitments to the Sustainable Development Goals, including medications. And there are responsibilities on behalf of the private sector, both because the private sector often acts as a provider, and also because the private sector does research and manufactures and distributes specific medications. So just in terms of who is accountable, there are a lot of actors involved in global health. Second, accountable for what? We need to have medications available throughout any given context in rural areas, urban areas, sometimes remote, mountainous or jungle or island areas. We need to have it be available even when there are conflict situations or humanitarian disasters, for example, and that requires communications and transportation networks. We need to have medications be accessible, accessible physically accessible, accessible on the basis of non-discrimination so that ethnic minorities or racial minorities or women or discriminated or marginalized groups based on their sexual orientation or gender identity or persons with disability can access appropriate medications. We need to make sure that they're economically affordable and accessible and that there's information accessibility, that both providers know when the medication should be used and under what conditions and also that patients understand the conditions for which they require this medication and how to use it. We need to have medications that are of adequate quality, that are safe as well as effective that aren't diluted and could lead to resistance, for example. So accountability for what is also complicated in global health. And finally, accountability to whom? One way to think about the health system is about the relationships in the health system. The goal throughout a health system is to change relationships that might be based on largesse or charity to relationships of what Lynn Friedman has called constructive accountability. 
so that service providers feel a sense of obligation to patients, who in turn feel a kind of entitlement to those services or care. Program implementers feel accountable to service providers, and policymakers are in turn accountable to program implementers. Elected government officials, including legislators, have responsibilities to make sure that those policymakers get budgets and have guidelines to follow to meet their obligations. And all of these actors are responsible to the users of the health system who are not just patients, but they are also social and legal citizens who are exercising assets of their social or legal citizenship in claiming a medication or another health entitlement. In international health and development, it's sometimes hard to trace the relationships, the source of a funding commitment, for example, the channel through which it goes, and the program area and impact it has on the people who use it. The example of getting medication to patients that need it is a very small example, but health is much broader than getting one medication or even a formulary of medications. Health includes social determinants that go far beyond the health sector. Health includes political determinants that operate in transnational space and legal determinants that shape policy frameworks and norms and structure institutions. Health includes commercial determinants that operate within those frameworks. Moreover, in the SDGs, Goal 3 on Healthy Lives and Well-Being is interdependent on other SDGs, gender equality, education, reduction of inequalities, access to effective and fair and transparent institutions and the rule of law, and others as well. So we can see that accountability in global health is a very complex tapestry of relationships and obligations and actors. In tackling the issue of accountability, the Independent Accountability Panel focused not on all of these relationships, but on the actions necessary to take to promote accountability throughout this tapestry. So what is the IAP, the UN Secretary General's Independent Accountability Panel? In 2010, the UN Secretary General, Ban Ki-moon at the time, issued a global strategy on women's and children's health because of lagging progress in the Millennium Development Goals related to women's and children's health. As a result of that global strategy, the Commission on Information and Accountability was established under the auspices of the World Health Organization, and out of that came a sui generis mechanism called the Independent Expert Review Group. In 2015, the Secretary General issued a new, revised and broader global strategy on women's, children's and adolescents' health in the Sustainable Development Goals. And this global strategy focuses not just on survival, but on surviving, thriving and transforming the conditions that drive patterns of women's, children's and adolescents' health and ill health across societies and within societies. The SDGs deal with inequalities in rich countries as well as poor countries. As part of that revised global strategy, the Independent Accountability Panel was established with a broader, more robust mandate to match the SDGs and the new global strategy. So what are the actions that are necessary to make accountability real for women's, children's, and adolescents' health in the Sustainable Development Goals? The IAP has used this unified framework for what accountability means at both global and national levels. And let's take those components separately. In health and global health, accurate, reliable data is absolutely essential for accountability. But we require more than just data. Data should be disaggregated so that we can tell if there are disparities within population groups. We also want fit-for-purpose indicators, and we want to make sure that indicators chosen don't lead to any adverse unintended consequences such as coercive practices to increase the amount of coverage among certain populations. Monitoring also needs to apply to the private sector and to different kinds of providers depending on the context that we're looking at. 
In addition to monitoring, which is given the lion's share of attention in global health, there is a need for independent review. Independent review tells us which strategies are working well and can be built upon, and those that are not working well and need to be modified. Independent review needs to cover the private sector as well as the public sector. And in global health governance, there's also a critical need for independent review. In a way, the role of the Independent Accountability Panel can be thought of as a monitor of the monitors that follow data in women's, children's, and adolescents' health in the every women, every child, every adolescent ecosystem. Finally, the IAP expanded the Commission on Information Accountability's use of remedial action to action and remedy. Remedies can be administrative remedies, they can be other sorts of remedies, but they can also be legal and judicial remedies. Consider, for example, the need for independent review and remedies in the event of noncompliance with the International Code of Breast Milk Substitutes. And we might think the same thing in terms of the example that I gave at the beginning about pharmaceutical regulation. As Richard Horton and the Lancet Commission on Legal Determinants of Health have pointed out, the law is a crucial determinant of health outcomes and access to health. And in democracies, the rule of law and legal institutions are critical for promoting the global strategy and achieving universal health coverage and the sustainable development goals. This needn't be thought of as punitive, and it also shouldn't be thought of as just within the health system, because we also need laws and regulations and remedies in the event of health actions from commercial determinants. Think, for example, of the tobacco industry and the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. Those industries need to be appropriately regulated that's not to say that the private sector doesn't have an important role to play in achieving the sustainable development goals and the global strategy on women's, children's, and adolescents' health. But the private sector is always more accountable when there is a robust public sector. All of this, of course, requires strengthening institutions. The IAP has flagged the need to invest in and strengthen institutions for monitoring independent review and providing remedies and normative oversight. The purpose of remedies and action and of strengthening institutions generally throughout the global strategy and in the SDGs is always to provide accountability to those to whom promises have been made to leave no one behind. The IEP is a small panel made up of 10 independent experts appointed by the UN Secretary General who serve in a voluntary capacity and are from different countries and regions around the world. But the IAP's experience in explicating accountability under the global strategy has useful lessons to expand more broadly to universal health coverage and to the SDGs in general. The purpose of a mechanism such as the Independent Accountability Panel is to clarify dimensions of accountability and the actions necessary to promote it and to catalyze greater accountability at national level and at global level by these institutions that we have been discussing. Ultimately, it is social accountability that we're seeking in the global strategy and universal health coverage and in the sustainable development goals more broadly. Through citizen-led and community-based empowerment, but also through strengthening these institutions. And that often requires unpacking those relationships again. Who is accountable for what? To whom? Because real accountability is relational in specific contexts where specific kinds of power relationships operate. The world's leaders made a promise to people across the globe to transform the conditions that produce ill health and poverty and climate destruction and inequality into a world that we want through the Sustainable Development Agenda. To keep that promise requires meaningful accountability.